Hey guys, bet you didn't know I had glasses. Welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Starship Captains. It plays one to four players, takes roughly 25 minutes of play, and is for ages 12 and up by CGE. This is a game all about going out and trying to make your mark. You are going to be in control of a ship and you're going to be trying to make a captain, but everyone else is as well. As you go out, you're going to be completing missions, utilizing your crew, you're going to be repairing your base or your specific vehicle, as well as gathering tech and putting new tech onto your vehicle, hiring more space crew, promoting them as you go along, and of course, uh, interacting with different space bases and increasing your reputation along the way. But beware, there's also going to be pirates in space and you'll need to defeat them and you'll gain artifacts. At the end of four rounds, if you have the most victory points, you will be considered the most valuable of the pilots out there and you'll be become the captain, which is your coveted dream. Can you do it? Find out in the game as I talk about how to set it up, how to play, and of course, my review. Now, just like a lot of other CG games, what I do is I give you the basic rundown of setup and the basic idea of gameplay, and then I talk about what I think, my review of it, which is the most important, because there are people who do better jobs at tutorials than me, people who are paid to do them, and that is all the video is about. And so I will have the gal who I watched, as well as read the rules for myself, to make sure that it coincided, and she did a great job. There's a link down below in the description. Otherwise, though, let me show you how to set it up, and maybe you'll understand just based off of my explanation. First, choose the game board. There is going to be a top right hand side that'll tell you how many players you're playing with and flip it to one of those sides. I'll explain the three player setup. It's a three player game board and then right next to it is going to be a long track which is going to be where you're putting all of your uh, specific tech that you're going to be using throughout the game. Each player is also going to get a main player board and their own tech track for their player board. To begin, for setup for the main game board, give each player a ship, which these you had to customize and build yourself. Not too challenging though, and it explains it pretty well in the rule book as to how you fold all the cardboard. You're going to be taking all of these little tokens here and placing them down on each of the spaces in the galaxy. They're going to look like little triangles. All the number ones are going to stay, and all of the, uh, what do you call it, all the space stations are going to have their little space station card attached to it. Uh, the rest of the spaces, which are kind of like blank, you'll be placing down missions from the deck here. Uh, the space stations are going to leave the little cards and their little tokens here. And additionally, the last thing that's important about the main game board here is pirates. There's going to be little skull markers on the little routes from one planet to the next. Just go ahead and put some face down pirates in each of those locations and then flip them all over at the same time so you don't know what you're getting. At the very top of the board here, there's going to be three medals, one for each player that's going to be positioned in this little medal slot, you can't miss it. And then there's going to be the main space station piece. This is going to go in the middle of the board if there are no units there uh, at the beginning of the second round. Then, in each of the third and fourth rounds, you'll put one of these guys here. The, the, they're called the gray guys. I call them the red shirts. They're basically only able to repair the ship. They don't do a whole lot, but you can upgrade them. And the last thing on this main game board here you see is the mission deck. Just make sure that it's shuffled and place it in the bottom right hand side. As for the tech deck, what you'll do is you'll separate the Omega cards, which are these guys here. You'll shuffle them up and you'll place them in the last three spots. And then you're going to take out four, uh, five alpha cards from the deck here, and they're gonna have a little A on them, and put them in the first five slots. Afterwards, shuffle the alpha and beta cards from this deck and place them down to form the rest of the deck. So as people gather these cards, you're going to be drawing from here and putting them down. So eventually beta are gonna come out. Uh, as for the player boards, you are going to get your own ship, which means in the ship, you're going to need dudes. There's going to be one of every colored dude uh, in the main ready area of your space station. And then you're going to get one of each of the colored guys in this little queue line. And then on the line, you're going to see the colors and it's gonna be red, yellow, blue respectively in the queue. And then there's going to be red, yellow, blue, and a gray guy in the ready position. Everybody is also going to get a medal in their medal slot. There's literally a spot that shows where the medals go. It's nice and easy. And then there's upgrade rings. These are little rings that you can upgrade your characters to co commanders uh, as opposed to captains. They're like the next rank higher. So you can kind of help them improve themselves. You'll just put them in the little rings on the side of your ship. And finally, damage. On not only your space, like your, your vehicle, but also your tech track. There are little damage markers on the bottom of those boards and uh, inside the supply area of your ship. Just place them in those spots. There should be technically in a three player game, seven, four in this track and three on your ship. After you've got all that set up, then you're going to make sure you check the uh, different factions in the game. Each faction is gonna come with their own unique board 
You're going to be positioning uh, one of your faction tokens that kind of moves around the board, which look like little eggs, on the spot that says zero. And then each of the factions is also going to come with a card that influences the game whenever players reach a certain point on their board. This board, that board, and that board are all about moving your pieces whenever you're able to around it, gaining any points and stuff like that as you touch them, and eventually scoring victory points at the end of the game based on how far you got. And they're all exactly the same thing. They all have their own unique cards cards, and you can either choose which ones you want, or go with the base setup and it'll tell you what cards you can utilize. Then the last thing pretty much is everybody's going to get a player reference sheet. This explains pretty much all the symbols in the game that you're going to find as well as a round overview. There's going to be a supply area, which is where you're going to put all of the extra characters that are going to come out as well as androids. And then you're going to have damage, artifacts, additional of these uh, leadership badges, and more pirate ships that will pop out as well. Set the Omega sides, uh, cards aside, as well as these little faction markers here, when as you go around the board more than once, you'll be picking up these guys here, because uh, you may or may not be using them throughout the game. And of course, keep the rule book and the score sheet handy for when you need them. Okay, so playing the game is even easier than setting up. It's even easier than the intro. There's literally only two main actions you can take, and then there's passing. And passing just means you're done for the round and that everyone else will play it out until they are finished. The first thing that you can do is you can use one of your crew members and take them from the ready area and place them in the queue line. And when you do that, you can enter a room based on their color. Every character can go to the gray room, which is to repair one thing on your ship or on your tech board. And then every other character will go based on the color that they represent. Now you can choose to go in one of these main four rooms uh, on your ship, or if you have any rooms such as this board here, on this tech board here, and of the color of the character that you're moving, like if I have this guy here, this is called the captain's chair, and it requires a red unit. This is a room that you can use if you move a red guy from your starting position to your queue line position. So that's the one thing you can do pretty much on your turn, is you can utilize your, cap, your, your characters, put them in the queue line, and activate the room of their color. Let's talk about the different rooms and what they all do. The gray one, which can be used by anyone and is mainly just going to be used by these crew members, are, is going to let you upgrade any, or upgrade, repair any space on your ship in the cargo hold or on your tech board. This space here, the blue one, is called a tech. Tech will let you gather any one of these cards and position them onto your tech board. These are gonna provide you with bonuses at the end of the game if they're Omega, or if they're the main Alpha and Beta, they're gonna give you instant rewards that will activate whenever you enter a room of that color, or uh, during the game, they're gonna be passive awards based on what you do. Like whenever you move your ship, you get to move an extra time, or if you ever gather a tech, you can gather an extra one or replace an extra tech. This one here is the yellow one, it's very simple. If you have a ship next to a pirate, meaning that you're on a planet and there is a pirate in one of the quadrants that is going to take you to another planet, you can simply defeat that pirate. You'll gain the benefits of the pirate, but you'll also take one damage. Whenever you move through a pirate or whenever you attack a pirate, you will take damage unless a card says otherwise. So a good way of killing pirates because they're worth points at the end of the game. And then the red one, this lets you move two spaces. You don't have to move two if you don't want, but moving spaces is pretty simple. You go from adjacent planet to adjacent planet, and like I said before, if you come across a pirate and you move past them, you will take one damage for going through them. And those are the four main actions of the game, which involve using a character to go from here, your ready position, to your line. And when it goes to your line, it'll just slide to the next available space at the very end, just like Disneyland. Then, if you want, instead, you can choose to do a mission. When you go to a planet after moving, like using a red guy to move to a planet, you can then choose to take tackle a mission. You will take that mission and you will attach it to your board. On the side of your board, there's a little purple space and that will indicate the space where you can slot the mission in. And then you will choose the number of dudes required for the mission. So for instance, this one here says two. You can choose two guys. And it doesn't matter what two guys. You can choose two gray ones, two yellow ones, two blue ones, any combination, it's not important. But if you want to complete the mission and gain bonuses, you will choose the characters that are right for the job. The blue guy in this case and the yellow one will let you get the two bonuses and score you points after you've completed the mission. So you'll choose the number based on the, uh, the color. So blue and yellow is two. And if you choose these two specific colors in this order, you're going to gain bonuses. And it'll tell you on here what bonuses they are. Like this one here says you'll get a, a medal. And then this one here says you'll get one reputation for every single one of the slots. 
these, these tracks here, moving your character up, and of course you can choose your own. And at the end, you're going to take the mission off of your board here, take, you'll move it from here, and you can put it under your ship, and that will score you points at the end of the game based on the number on the bottom left-hand side bottom right hand side for you. That's how missions work. Once you have gathered a mission and you have put it under your ship, the highest token is going to move to that spot that you completed. You will flip that token over and then you're going to take a new mission out and put it down onto the game board. As well as refreshing, these tech trees, whenever you take one of these guys here and put it onto one of your spaces to gain their benefits and bonuses, you'll draw a new card from the deck. So always make sure that you replace. Now, Pirates, in addition to spawning randomly from cards, they will also spawn when, as each of these moves, so you complete a mission, you'll bring the highest value over, you'll flip it over, and you'll put a new card out. Then the next mission will be completed, and when this mission gets completed, the next highest token is going to move over, you're going to then flip it, and bring out a new mission. You'll notice that there are only five in a three-player game, and once they have all been flipped over, what you're going to do is you're going to take a pirate for each of those locations, and place them face down on those spaces unflip them so that they all have their starting numbers, the big red ones, and then place the pirates out based on their thruster color. Each of them are going to have a little thruster color, and that's going to insinuate where they're going to go based on these little galaxy runs. They have colors on them. When you see the board, you'll understand. So that is going to continually increase the amount of pirates as missions get done in the game. When you have used either your action to gather a mission and use units or taken a unit and used it for one of the room actions, eventually you're going to run out because you'll just do one of, one of these things on your turn. Take a character and move it or choose to do a mission. And when you have no more ready units, you're going to just have them all slid into the line and waiting to be waiting to come back and play for you again. Everybody else will have to do the same. They say, okay, we all have no units, we're all going to pass. When that happens, you will take all the characters in the line, you will push them until there's only three left in the line slot. And if you look at the board, it's quite easy to see. And then you'll have new units that you can utilize. Additionally, you're going to check the next round's space, gain any bonuses and distribute them evenly. So in this case, there are three medals. You would give every player a medal. And if there are any of these triangle spaces here, you are going to place them on the space in the back that it represents. So in this case here, it is saying, if you have nobody in the middle space by the second round, you will take this token as a bonus and place it in the middle. If you ever encounter a, a, one of these little triangles on the board, you're simply going to take them off and gain the benefit and put them on the next round's marker. So if you're on round two and you get this token, you put, place it here, and then these kind of pieces will progressively move on and you can use them round to round, but only once per round. And then after you've done that, so you've moved all your pieces here, gained your little characters here, as well as uh, placed any of the units out, and then placing these tokens out, you'll begin the next round by taking the first player marker and passing it onwards. And it'll just go from there. Placing your units out, choosing a room, or room actions if you've upgraded, and I'll talk about that during the review, and of course, being able to complete missions and scoring those points that will allow you to gain benefits. And there's a ton of benefits in this game, which I said, you pretty much understand it from here. If you want a more in-depth version of the explanation of the rules, which I don't think you'll need if you skim through the rules with this, but you can, and it's a really great overview. Check the link. Let's talk about my review now. Starship Captains is a very simple game. It would be on the medium light section, I would say, of modern board games, but it does look like there's a lot going on. And that's because you have a lot of choice, but the choices are straightforward. You're gonna know what you wanna do before the start of every turn that you have. Most of the time, the other opponents are not going to be messing with you. There are certain ways in which you can kind of block certain areas from players and basically make sure that you get a mission before they do. Um, there's certain cards that you can take on the tech tree that they won't be able to get once you've gathered them. But for the most part, it's all about you going around traveling the galaxy and doing the best you possibly can while your opponents are doing the same thing and you're kind of just all interacting on the same board with a few little ways in which you can uh, inflict a little bit of pain on each other. But there's no active way you can go out of your way to hurt people in this game, which was nice. It made it nice and flowy and the game was very, very straightforward. I didn't feel like I was ever like confused or had any issues with understanding what I needed, needed to do. But there is one little thing with this game as I adjust my glasses. Some of these cards here, these tech cards, is not straightforward what they do. You'll have to look on your little round overview slash player reference and you can see all the symbols on the back here and they will tell you what those do. Sometimes you run across a symbol that 
you've seen or you know what it is, but it'll have a cross through it and it doesn't explain necessarily what that means. So you're gonna have to either look it up or uh, interpret it the best you possibly can. Because I've looked through, there are some specific uh, effects and whatnot that you can look at the back of here and also specific card overviews. Uh, they explain the more complex ones. But I still ran into a few that were like, I'm not exactly sure what this does. I think I know what it does, but I'm not perfectly sure. This game is wonderful. I love the idea of, on my turn, selecting a unit. That unit's gonna have a function, and as it progresses, the game progresses, they will have more functions. You can start adding rooms to your tech tree. When you place down rooms, you'll get bonuses when you connect certain pieces with other pieces. You're also gonna get the benefit of the room, whether it be a passive bonus, or whether it be a room bonus, or whether it be something like this Omega guy, which is going to give you points for each of the red or the uh, yellow characters on your ship. Another thing I didn't touch through in the rules, and I wanted to explain how much I enjoyed this feature, was the upgrade feature. When you get medals, they're used for a variety of things, but the main thing they're going to be used for is upgrading units. You'll spend three, you'll get one of these rings, and you'll put it on one of your characters. And from now on, that character can do two actions. Now, if it's a yellow character, it can do two yellow room actions, which means it can choose to fight a pirate, and maybe it will choose to jump drive somewhere on the board, or fight two pirates, or you could choose to use it as an interesting thing. This is an interesting thing I can do. You can go, I'm going to use it to fight pirates, and then I'm going to put it in line, and I'm going to allow the next person to come out of the line, and I'll move, uh, I'll move it down. So bam, it gives me an extra red action as opposed to the yellow one. So if you coordinate how you place your characters in this queue, and how do you choose to upgrade units by adding the little, uh, little badges to them, it's going to give you value in a lot of different ways. It starts making a lot of things kind of, uh, kind of useful and interesting. Uh, another thing about upgrading units is instead of upgrading them, which is still sort of an upgrade, you can spend one to change any unit from one color to another. So remember how I was talking about you'll get victory points at the end of the game for each yellow unit and or yellow commander that you have. You can start turning them all yellow at the very end to score you points. Or you could turn these little red shirt dudes, which are actually gray, because they can only repair, into a unit that actually has a color, like this red guy here if I wanted to move more. And then this guy will go back to the supply. So you can always kind of upgrade your units in different ways, which is nice. Um, what else did I love about this game? Uh, I enjoyed the tech tree tremendously. It's very simple. You're going to be constantly trying to remove damage, choosing the better rooms, choosing what ones are going to give you the most value throughout the game, choosing passives early on, choosing victory points a little later on. But if you don't choose them too soon, they're going to be gone forever. You might not ever see an Omega again. And so there's all that little choice there. Then these tracks here. This track simulates when you move around. Every time you move past a benefit, you're going to gain it, which is nice. And you get points at the end of the game for where you are on the tracks. And as soon as somebody hits that top portion of any of these tracks, these start to open up. This one here says, uh, during setup, you put a A tech card there. And when this event occurs, when this pops up, every player will have this added to their tech tree, but it'll just be over there. So from now on, in this case, I can shoot with a, a yellow room and I won't take a damage from a pirate when I hit them. And that's great, but that helps everybody. So now the game becomes more of a combat game. And every single one of these has a unique one. There's plenty of them to choose from throughout the game. If you get all the way to the very end, there's an ultra bonus. This one here is gonna give you three medals, which is basically an instant promotion. This one lets you repair the ship and take an artifact. And then this one over here lets you get three artifacts. And as you go around this board, once, you flip this over for five points. Twice, you'll gain this little loyalty token, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what else to discuss? So, oh, 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 artifacts. Artifacts are so cool. When you fight pirates and then there's some other ways you can gain these guys here, you're going to take artifacts, but you can only put enough that are in your ship. And every time you take damage, that's going to close off a portion of your ship. You're never going to take damage on this tech board ever again. You just start with four and then any other damage is going to go over here. But you need artifacts in the game because these are actually additional actions. When you get two of the same color, in this case, I have a yellow, red, yellow, red, you can actually choose a yellow action or a red action when you discard them. So you don't even need to use a guy. And that provides you even more benefit when you need those actions, you can kind of save them. Uh, speaking of saving, you can choose to pass before your guys run out, which is nice. And in some cases I did that. Like one time I gathered what they call an Android. Androids are also bonuses. These are the guys I wanted to talk to you about. These guys are wild. They will be used for anything. And in addition, if you have these guys when a mission requires you to have one, because sometimes there's going to be a space that only androids can be on, you will gain tremendous benefits. But sadly, when you use it, it goes away. So this is an extra bonus action, but it leaves you just like the artifact tokens do as well. 
Overall, this is a stunningly fun game. If you don't mind a game that's on the lighter side with a lot of choice though, then you're going to really, really love this. The quality is there. All the, all the boards are double thick and the, you put them together with, along with your little cool 3D spaceships and cardboard. These work to me just as well as a mini does and that's usually not the case for me. Um, all your characters function on the boards and make sense. People were doing when my playthrough, they were putting their characters all the way at the end of the line and moving them all the way up just because it feels fun to do so. Even though I was like, okay, let's speed the game along. You don't need to keep moving them all along. But they really, really enjoyed the feeling of putting the characters in the queue, making them go through and the new characters coming out and you feel like you're part of the game. You feel like you're commanding these crew members to go out on missions, to go into rooms and do certain things. Oh, help me get this tech up and running. Or, oh no, there's a, there's a pirate over here. You need to go ahead and shoot at Johnny. And so Johnny's gonna go into this pod and blast this guy. And all the while, the games are quick. The turns are fast. You always feel like you're ready for the next turn and no turn is ever gonna take more than like two minutes or so. It's really, really straightforward. There's bonus locations that will give you extra bonuses when you pick them up and they'll come back next round. All the missions can be low points, low value, uh, uh, high requirement, but low points, but there's great bonuses or there's gr really difficult to get, but it's going to have a lot of points and the bonuses aren't so good. And you have to select and vary what spaces you want to go to. And then the tech cards give you bonus points based on certain missions that you try and complete over throughout the game and where you want to go and you have to set your pathing. But if you want to just play the game and run through the galaxy, you're still not going to be blown away in this game. It's always going to be a pretty close score as long as everybody takes one of these Omegas. That's the one tip, is don't let somebody just get all of these guys. They're going to score a ton of points. Make sure that they're divvied up. Make sure that you're going for them, at least one or two of them, if you can possibly get your hands on them, as well as whenever there's a bonus for a mission that'll let you gain one as well. Everybody enjoyed this game. Uh, somebody said that this is their game of the year so far. They played it. I don't know if this came out this year or not, but uh, it's their game that they played this year that they enjoyed the most. Another person said this is definitely in the running. For me, it's a solid game. It's a lot of fun. It's very straightforward. The setup is easy and I will remember it forever now, which is really, really nice. And I'll often come back to this game. If I'm ever asked to play this game, I will play it. And in certain groups who like a lighter game, maybe not Brian, my writer, but everybody else will be enjoying this game for a long time. It's going to stay in my collection so there you go it has to have a seal of approval all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review it's my first video using my glasses my brand new glasses usually i just wear contacts so it's been weird i have to keep like moving them up and stuff i don't know for you guys that wear glasses you have to always constantly touching them and it's been a long time since i've had glasses so now i've got to get used to i don't know fiddling with them i mean i still have contacts i might not be doing this all the time but uh, do you think, this is the question, but the main question of the entire video, do I look like a dad or are these, like how do I look? Because some of my friends say these are like dad glasses or not, not the coolest. Are these not cool glasses? I thought they were pretty good for a bargain bin glasses set. Unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Go ahead and like us, and if you'd like, uh, you can subscribe to the channel, hit that bell notification button. If we've earned your subscription, if you've watched more than one of the, our videos before, and you like what we have to say, and you think that we're fair and honest, then uh, I would appreciate, I would appreciate that very, very much. It keeps us doing more and more videos. Um, I wanted to come up with some negatives to this game, but honestly, I just couldn't find any. Everyone had so much fun. I just would say that it's a lighter game. And so for those of you looking for a big, deep, interactive, like com complex experience, it's probably not here, but I don't know. I, I, I try and be as fair and balanced as I possibly can, but I know everyone loves all kinds of games. And I want, I just, I, I love games too. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> all right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to being able to see you uh, next time or maybe I'll just uh, maybe becoming a captain with you next time that, that that's the one au revoir